Okay, uh, welcome to the Advocacy and Outreach Special Interest Group meeting. Uh, today is uh, December 19th, so we are still in the Christmas mode. We have uh, four people on the call. Uh, so, Mark Way, Tracy, uh, Jacqueline from um, uh, Continuous Delivery Foundation, um, and me. Um, my name is Alek um, So, uh, our today agenda is actually quite short. So we have uh, one item proposed is about the Jenkins uh, elections uh, retrospective. So if you were not following uh, the Jenkins project, we had elections which just finished. So if you go to Jenkins IO website, uh, there is a, a blog post with uh, results. And uh, one main thing about these elections, uh, these uh, elections are actually first ever elections in the Jenkins project. Uh, so since uh, it started in 2011 as Jenkins after the renaming, uh, we had a board uh, consisting of three uh, members. Uh, we uh, planned to do elections, but uh, they have never happened. So finally, we have new board. Uh, so now uh, the board is expanded to five people. So we have Uli Hafner, Alex Ol, and me joining the Jenkins board. We also have KK and Tyler, who are long-time uh, Jenkins contributors and uh, who will write uh, us through all uh, uh, the board uh, management processes and the governance processes. And we also have a renewed uh, uh, list of um, um, officers. So we have uh, um, five officers, Daniel Beck, Alisa, they stand as a state of security and events officer. Olivier Vernin became an infrastructure officer. So before that, uh, the position was empty. Uh, Tyler Croy was uh, um, handling that, but now Olivier becomes uh, officer. So we have more Ben White there. Oliver Gonza remains a release officer working on Jenkins LTS releases, uh, release candidate testing, and uh, basically release management. And Mark Wade, uh, who is also on the call, he becomes documentation officer. This is a new position which was just introduced this year. So to emphasize the importance of uh, the documentation in the project, we introduced a, a new role which is uh, aligned with documentation special interest group. So this are the election results. Uh, yeah, you can see some statistics there about uh, uh, number of no, officer elections. But what we basically got here that uh, we had around uh, 90 southern uh, eligible accounts, and after all, we got uh, more than 300 votes. So you may see that it's less uh, than one percent. It's small, but actually, if you take a look at statistics for other elections like Apache Foundation or whatever, you can see that the numbers are approximately the same. Mm -hmm. So it's still 300 votes is a big number, and thanks to everybody who voted, uh, thanks to everybody who helped uh, that happen. Special thanks to Olivia and Tracy who uh, have uh, driven the election process uh, to the end. So. Yeah, now we have everything running and there is a lot of things for the board uh, uh, to happen in the future, uh, like uh, restoring governance process, like meetings, or whatever. So the things we really need to advocate project and to uh, enable uh, that, um, the governance board uh, will be able uh, to help with that. And obviously a lot of improvements, etc. also uh, uh, dependent on the board uh, and on the Jenkins community health. So I believe there will be a lot of communication between the Jenkins board and advocacy and outreach seat so that uh, we can uh, go forward and to expand to the community. Okay, so the agenda was uh, Jenkins Jenkins Hi, uh, yep. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. No, I was just going to say, yes, yeah, congratulations to yourself, Mark, Alyssa, and everyone who's involved and mm -hmm. I think pretty momentous milestone for the community. So, Oleg, you, you mentioned that the participation rate was not too far out of range. So other other boards and other communities see similarly, surprisingly to me anyway, low percentages of people who are have been in, have been somehow co in contact with us, but didn't bother to vote. So that, that's a relief. That's good. Yeah, right. So it was just one of the comments and the, the perspectives and uh, I addressed uh, that. Uh, yeah went through. So yeah, it's a pretty good number of votes and, uh, and uh, this basically, it's not 10 people, it's not just candidates who voted. Uh, there is a lot of active contributors who joined uh, the elections who voted. So I believe that uh, we can say that these elections are done. And uh, if we can get to 3,000 contributors in the next elections, just in one year, then it's great. But 
it's a little bit good start. So well, then we've established a pattern, right? And the 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 rules say that we will vote again in a year and do it again in another year, right? So so we're going to get better at this. Thanks. Exactly. And in order to make it better, we actually need feedback from all the participants. So whomever watches this call, uh, we need your feedback. Uh, there is a retrospective document which was uh, created in order to gather some comments. And uh, this document is still open. Uh, so uh, this meeting is just another way to discuss the feedback, maybe to define some action items and follow-ups. But if you want to add more comments to the agenda, please do so because yeah, this list uh, basically it will continue growing. So any idea, any proposal or any concern you have, just uh, please put it there so we can uh, proceed. If you want to communicate something in private, so for example, you didn't like something, but you want to communicate it uh, to the board, and there is also a way to privately raise the, the things. So basically there are two ways. Uh, one is to send a message to the Jenkins board. Uh, there is a mailing list uh, which is connected, uh, or you can just contact uh, Tracy. So Tracy was leading uh, the process. So if you have some feedback, just use one of these channels for private feedback. If you need a meeting or whatever, please let us know. We could also organize that. Okay, so we have a lot of time today. Uh, we could spend some time uh, to just go through this um, retrospective list and maybe to put some comments and feedback, or we could uh, add other topics uh, to the agenda. So what would be your preference? So for me, at least, I was hoping that we would go through the retrospective document, at least mm -hmm. in a conversational mode, and be sure that if there were things mm -hmm. that were really hot or anxiety generating in that document, we could discuss them. I, I didn't see anything that caused me great anxiety, but I, I thought it would be useful here in this session. Tracy, are you, oh, did we lose yeah. Tracy? Uh, yeah, Tracy is like at another meeting. Ah, okay. Yeah, let's do it on our own. And uh, yeah, the meeting is recorded so that uh, Tracy can follow up later and we can ensure that we have meeting calls. Uh, okay. If uh, there are major follow-ups. Okay, so if anybody has any feedback, just uh, put it here. Okay, so what went well? Mm, actually, so first about elections, uh, elections not only for the board, but for also officers, a lot of discussions. And actually we had um, adjustments in the process this year. For example, one of major adjustments that we went to three board member votes instead of two, uh, just to have uh, uh, five members so that uh, there is no voting for the local or whatever. Uh, so these uh, changes we discussed in the community. We had a governance meeting in September to vote on them. There was something like six amendments uh, tabled in order to uh, change the process. All the amendments uh, were accepted. And before that, we discussed them in the mailing list. Uh, we discussed them at the advocacy and outreach meetings. Uh, so the process evolved and it keeps evolving. Uh, moreover, we get updates uh, Good updates and documentation. So, as a part of uh, our, uh, let's say it's almost a crusade moving out of Jenkins Wiki to Jenkins IO. Uh, so, we got all governance documents, etc., moved uh, in parallel with uh, voting. So, you can find uh, recent versions and updated version of, of all documents right on the site. Now, you can find them easily without Googling because before that, uh, it was just in Wiki and linked from anywhere. And here, for example, we have election process, which is documented with all the amendments we had. Um, and we will follow this process next year. Well, unless we apply more amendments after the retrospective. Um, and yeah, there is other documents like the governance document, also list of governance uh, board, which was all of the, also updated. We are still uh, waiting for uh, buyers and avatars from some people, but uh, yeah. Uh, this page uh, also evolves. Okay, so it's great. And yeah, we definitely got a lot of feedback in the developer mailing list when we started that. Uh, even if we account feedback in 2019, because we had iterations and attempts to make votes before, for example, in 2015 and 2016. So if we had that, it was a huge number of discussions. Uh, 
yet another, I'm not sure who added that, but uh, yeah, basically almost everybody was eligible to vote uh, if you had an account created before September 2019. So basically even you come and yeah. uh, contribute. The el the, the, that eligibility thing was, was, for me at least, was huge. It's if I'd submitted a bug, right? Mm -hmm. If I'd done anything that caused me to get an account on Jenkins.io, mm -hmm. I became eligible to vote. And Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, what else we have here? Yeah, the elections uh, were done. Actually, we had a lot of great candidates. I would say that everybody who was on the ballot was, uh, uh, yeah, everybody well deserved to be on the Jenkins board. Uh, yeah, in the future, we could probably rotate uh, as a part of election. So probably we could introduce additional roles, for example, uh, shadow officers or whatever to have more people uh, on board to the governance, for example, like Kubernetes community does. So uh, there are uh, things like that in the feedback, so we could uh, facilitate that. Uh, yeah, uh, there is a lot of voters, there is a lot of candidates, uh, and uh, there is a new voter registration application. So. Yeah, the, one of the things we discovered, which is aligned with this topic, that uh, there was no solution ready to handle this number of voters um, in uh, the mode we selected, because um, yeah, Jenkins project they needed uh, to have a voting system, and obviously this number is beyond the uh, number of active contributors numbers in, I guess, any community in the world. But since we were inclusive, uh, we needed to uh, make it possible. That's why we did a two-stage voting system with additional um, uh, vote registration applications, which allowed us uh, to collect contacts of people who applied for voting. And uh, it also allowed us uh, to work around issues, for example, with uh, submitting uh, data like emails to another voting system, because it was not 100% uh, clear legally whether we were able to do that. So this system actually allowed us to solve these concerns. And yeah, last comment that everything actually worked well. So we didn't really have any kind of problems during the selections. Everything was handled well. Everybody was positive. So yeah, even if uh, there were some uh, delays uh, in the process because of tooling, uh, we got it done. Okay. And regarding negative part, yeah, there is a lot of, well, it's not negative part. It's something we could improve. So let's go through that. Yeah, huge number of um, accounts, I believe we discussed that. Uh, I'm clear why we went uh, with Jenkins Lab accounts instead of GitHub. So yeah, See, it was... It, mm -hmm. That one for me is, is not at all unclear. I'm a little surprised someone else did, found it unclear. I don't know a way to take GitHub accounts and turn them into an email address. Do we have facilities to do that? Well, theoretically, yes. Um, practically, um, it's rather a problem of contributor definition. Because mm. yeah, we can say that everybody has a GitHub account uh, in 2019, but it's not correct. And also, our definition of contributor is not committer. It's right. uh, if you write a blog post, you're a contributor. If you just provide a good issue, good feedback, you also contribute to the project. And um, uh, that's why we decided to go with Jenkins Lab account because historically it collects uh, all the uh, contributors we have in the project. So if you edit content, for example, on Jenkins Wiki, if you edit, if you create issues, if you do contributions, if you maintain plugins, then you have a Jenkins Lab account. So I believe that LDAP was much more representative than GitHub, but obviously it caused particular issues. No, certainly. I assume that the, the set is larger in LDAP accounts than, than in GitHub because submitting a bug doesn't require that I get a, a GitHub account, right? I just don't, don't have to have it. Yeah, and also it's a problem of uh, basically who you would take from GitHub because yeah, you can go to GNPCI, here you can see that there are 2,000 people here. But again, it doesn't map to everything because uh, we have a lot of contributors who don't, uh, who are not really a member of Jenkins CI GitHub organization because they do not need that. To submit a pull request, you don't have to be a member. You would need to be a member if you, you're maintaining something, uh, but that's it. 
Same, we have other organizations like Jenkins Infra, Jenkins uh, CA, uh, ZH uh, for Chinese localization community. So we, we could have merged that, but again, it doesn't represent uh, the community in the current state. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good, okay, thanks. Yeah, so how we do it uh, in the next year, it's um, an open question, but yeah, yeah all, uh, as long as all DAP accounts uh, approach port, I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if you want to participate in the next elections, and if you don't have a Jenkins old up account, probably you want to create one. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And uh, even uh, if it wasn't inclusive enough, actually in our original announcements by Tracy, uh, there was explicit uh, command that if somebody wanted uh, to participate in elections but didn't have a GitHub account, there was a way to raise a bit. So mm -hmm. even uh, so, not having a Jenkins old up account wasn't also a blocker. Uh, there were ways uh, to solve that. As far as I know, nobody used uh, this uh, way, but it was documented. Okay, so registered accounts were not fulfilled for bot accounts, and in some cases uh, people registered bot accounts, whatever. Not only bot accounts, but also team accounts, because in some cases we have uh, teams registered uh, um, as accounts. One of the cases which caused some internal discussions is Jenkins security team, because mm -hmm. it's registered as a GitHub account for process reasons, and somebody uh, applied, uh, subscribed for voting uh, on behalf of this account because we were sending uh, hyperlink streamings. Uh, well, this account didn't vote, uh, but uh, yeah, this is a point. Uh, unfortunately, right now our account app doesn't allow filtering that, uh, there is no tooling for that. Um, so in the future we need uh, to do something about that, um, but yeah, right now I guess it's just manual filtering uh, of voters, because what we could do, we, uh, we could uh, apply uh, manual filtering after this stage with um, register, voter registration. Because it's, if it's about 400, it's perfectly possible to do it manually in, let's say, one hour. At least to spot check accounts and ensure that uh, everybody is a uh, legit uh, contributor and not a group. So it's something we could do next time. Yeah, there, there are predictable patterns in, in the naming of some things, at least team or, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I know that if I be in the CIE CD automation project, I say manual, not everybody will enjoy that, but it's mm -hmm. that easier yeah. than uh, to create any kind right. of automation for that. And and cheaper, right? Ultimately, it's yeah. spending an hour is not that much. Exactly. Okay, so voting was delayed with no communication about uh, the delay until uh, after the actual vote opening date. Yeah, it's a valid comment. Mm -hmm. So it's something to um, take into account in our process and hopefully there will be no delays next time. Right. So this time it was quite unexpected and uh, there were some comments above, for example, significant CI Jenkins error failures, which actually a limited bandwidth of the Jenkins infrastructure team, which was instrumental for conducting this vote. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah, elections are important, but uh, all Jenkins contribution has been unable to deliver the changes. It's more important. So that's why there were some unplanned delays, as well as tooling and all these things which were not really planned. Okay. So, yeah, just let's do better next time. Because, yeah, this is a perfectly uh, valid comment. It's not really acceptable uh, if you want, uh, you want to do regular elections. So let's try to improve. Yeah. Okay, general lack of transparency around the implementation. No Jira issues to watch. So, Same. so, yeah, I, 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 I wrestle with that one. I think I, it's, it, I think it's also valid. I'm not terribly concerned about it personally because I think that there were there. It's a natural outcome that we will be more transparent as we track things we do to this. This was a learning phase. We had to do things rapidly, and mm -hmm. and the the speed at which they had to be done meant that we didn't use our typical created epic and track it with with our usual project techniques. Uh, 
yeah but yeah we definitely should do that uh, so yeah agree yeah well we had communications with we had communications and advocacy and outreach channels we had communications in the developer mailing list so it's not that it was completely radio silent but yeah obviously communication could have been better well and and for me it was implementation was the concern here and mm -hmm. we had talked in depth about how should we do this how should we approach it but then the, the implementation progress there were times it just mm -hmm. had to make quick progress exactly Mm, so, okay. Uh, so the next uh, point is about um, affiliation. So just to clarify it, um, yeah, basically, uh, Mark is probably the main victim of that. Uh, so we have uh, some uh, rules which basically prevent uh, any company of ha uh, from having more than fifty percent of seats. So like here. And what it means uh, that uh, even uh, so after elections, uh, if something uh, uh, doesn't uh, go right, if for example, there are two persons or three persons away like, from the same company uh, who are not eligible, again, it was a case because uh, yeah, this election results, uh, both me and Mark Wade we were formally elected to the board, but uh, due to this 50% clause, we were not able to be on the board because Kiki also works for Calbis. Uh, so uh, we, well, basically the process that meant here. Yeah. That's why we need a complex selection system like CIFs or whatever, so that we don't need to rerun the votes after such things happening. We don't want to have second rounds or whatever. Um, so, and uh, one of the problems we had is that we didn't really document uh, the company affiliation uh, um, on our statements. So. If you go to the blog, if you go to the this election results, so here, yeah, I'm not sure how, yeah, and this announcements here and. Oh, no. Yeah, are you looking for the personal statements? You're certainly yeah. correct. There wasn't there wasn't a general purpose format for personal statements, right? It was it was mm -hmm. free form, and therefore many mm -hmm. did not disclose. Oh, I work for this company or that company. Yeah, exactly. So if you go uh, to our personal statements, uh, hmm. so I would rather say that nobody or almost nobody specified uh, the company affiliation. Right. At least I admit I didn't. And I did not. And I, I don't don't know that Alex did his either. So yeah, it's. Yeah. So yeah, this is something we could improve uh, because yeah, it definitely impacted the election results. Uh, yeah. uh, so yeah, maybe we right. should do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, then candidates, we are not asked uh, whether they are willing to participate before announcing their can uh, candidacy. So yeah, this is a valid concern. And actually, so what happened? There were limitations submitted uh, by Jenkins contributors and uh, some people uh, nominated people. Uh, well, that's what is the purpose. But I think that um, before announcing the, the candidates, uh, there was no communication with uh, potential candidates. And uh, we ended up in some situations uh, where we basically had people who didn't want uh, to be elected to particular roles, but who were announced uh, in the developer mailing list, and it caused a lot of confusion. So it's totally valid command. It's just not acceptable next time, and we need to, uh, to take it into account. Mm. Right, and the question that's asked there, I don't know what the what the question the answer is. It's certainly more than four days, mm -hmm. and I don't know how big it is, but it's a good mm -hmm. good thing. We agree. Yes, we 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 would like to. Now there was a subtlety there that Tracy, for instance, chose to step back so that she could run the election process, and I'm mm -hmm. hoping that the next time uh, we won't have that heavy a burden on running the election process. 
that it would yep. be po it would have been possible for her to 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 still be part of it. Mm -hmm. Well, next year we could have a joint report uh, during the elections. Uh, so that oh right, right. Uh, yeah, whomever is not running for the seat, and next year we will have uh, four people who are not running for the seat. There's definitely enough people to drive the elections. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay, then let's go next. Voting emails will be sent to everyone after adding new voters. Yeah, basically, it just caused a lot of confusion, but uh, it wasn't, it didn't cause any issues uh, because, yeah, basically, the votes have been already counted, so yeah, uh, nothing really changed there. Voter registration emails were stuck in st spam filters. Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I don't know what to do with that one because that's. Is there is there a solution for that kind of thing? Yeah, so there is a command. Actually, uh, account up uh, already has a complete voting voting feature. So something like two years ago, Olivier implemented voting system. It's not Swift. Uh, it's another uh, engine, but uh, with all the conditions uh, required by the Jenkins project. Uh, we didn't use it uh, this time because it wasn't finished, and again, taking all the infrastructure files, uh, there was no capacity to finish it. That's mm -hmm. why uh, uh, we used CIFs for the next year. We can use it at CIFs or we can use uh, our account app. So yet to be seen. Uh, but, well, um, yeah, in this case, maybe we could just do voter, voter registration inside uh, the account app. Again, it would uh, address this command. But I'm not sure. We still need to send a notification sometimes. Right. Some, something you can just post in Twitter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Voting handled by same nominees, which seems to be a conflict of interest from Marke. Yeah, that's correct. Though in this case, we basically needed uh, to make uh, the elections happen. Yeah, basically what it meant that uh, active contributors uh, who wanted to change the things, they were driving the elections. And not surprisingly, the same people were interested to be in the Jenkins board to change Jenkins. So that's why we got uh, to this conflict. Um, yeah, particularly it was uh, resolved by Tracy because Tracy stepped down. So at least there was no conflict on the board elections. Olivier was helping with uh, infrastructure and he was uh, running for uh, infrastructure officer position. Uh, but uh, basically it was uncontested. So I would, after Marky stepped down, uh, so I would say that uh, it wasn't critical there as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the point is valid. In ideal world, uh, we need uh, different people running uh, the elections and participating in them. I'm not sure how it's going to happen for infrastructure officer because whomever is an infrastructure officer, uh, uh, it's a re-election, um, but yeah. Let's assume that once cooling is done, it doesn't uh, really require a lot of involvement from infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Who knows? For both, we can definitely prevent it going forward. Right, right. But you're right, the infra officer, yes. Okay, so we can do something about that, but yeah, I think it's a topic for the next elections. Okay, um, we elected three uh, instead of two board members and it's unclear how the future elections will look like. So how it looks like according to our um, government document, we elect only uh, one board member next year, unless somebody steps down or whatever. So if you read uh, this, uh, well, the process which is somewhere in these links, it's pretty straightforward there. Uh, yes, it causes a problem because it's quite unbalanced, uh, one year, one uh, election, another year, three elections. It's still better than uh, having uh, four mem board members in the case of deadlock, um, but uh, yeah, we will need uh, to think uh, how we approach. Maybe somebody steps down by the next year and we resolve this question automatically, uh, but let's see. So the desirable mix that this is lobbying for is two, two every year? And that's what was described in the governance document at one point, but it's yep. counter to the 
serve for a two-year term, right? That's why it's three three one three one is because of the two-year term cadence. Exactly. Okay. So yeah, we did that. Um, it was discussed um, in the developers' meetings. It was discussed um, in the governors' meeting. So the change was perfectly legit. Um, yeah. It would have been great if we didn't need to do so, but uh, otherwise we would have had uh, one uh, board member who is not actually active in the project at the moment. So I think it was just pick your poison situation. Now I have not read the interim. If a board member steps down, there is an interim process described. I haven't read it, so I'll need to go read it. Is there a short summary that you know of, Oleg? To yeah, so. Basically, it's uh, just one sentence. Okay, it's an appointment. Uh, All right. Yeah, interim board member to fulfill uh, the remainder of the term, subject uh, to blessing uh, at okay. the governance meeting. So basically, common community process. I need to fix the link. I'm not sure why, but I it uh, still points to the wiki. So we moved uh, to Jenkins IO. Uh, they think that uh, yeah, we didn't have it before. So let's figure it out when it happens, if it happens. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, still, at least now we have uh, five uh, people in the board and all five contributors are active. So that uh, it gives us uh, opportunity and power to make changes in the project, which was then goal. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's is quite long. Yeah, and, and that one is, for me, that's that's a, a governance question. I propose we just skip it for this mm -hmm. this exercise. It is, yeah. it is that's more governance than it is election process. Right. So for us, elections, we are way to implement the governance process, which we already agreed on. Right. Uh, late steps is to actually build the governance model. We already have special interest groups. We already have officers. For example, in my statement, I say that I want to have technical student committee uh, mm -hmm. to orchestrate uh, uh, Jenkins architecture and to define a roadmap for the project. Um, but uh, all of that are the next steps. And it's a good time to provide feedback and input. So it's not something which went wrong. It uh, went as it was designed, but uh, now we have resources to change uh, this process and to improve the situation in the community. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, I'll, okay, so something like that. So if you have any feedback about the governance, etc., just uh, drop it to the developer mailing list. Uh, currently, even if it's called developer mailing list, actually it's for developers and for the governance purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, as documented here. So please don't hesitate to drop your proposals or whatever so that we can discuss them. And yeah, I have some proposals and drafts, so you won't be uh, the only one proposing the changes. And it's open to everyone, so just do that. Oh. Currently, there are no way for a Jenkins account to be deleted without asking a Jenkins administrator. We saw seven or three people asking for that. Okay. So, and that's when I don't quite understand. So what? I saw the the phrase unsubscribed earlier. What what is what does that mean? It means that they replied to our email and said, "Please unsubscribe me." Yeah. So when you send us an greet, basically you can ask to be unsubscribed from your account ah. or whatever. Uh, I'm not sure how this magic happens because we uploaded the entire list. So what is our list? Is when we re-upload the list, for example, in one year, we can add people who are unsubscribed uh, back to the list. Uh, but Got it. yeah, so this is something for infrastructure teams to figure out. There's no real way of collecting the the number 700 came from somewhere. It came from SendGrid, yeah. But, and I assume that means there's a list of those 700 email addresses. But the next time we generate, unless we take specific steps, those 700 mm -hmm. requests to unsubscribe will be ignored, and we'll send to them again. Yeah, that's my understanding. But again, okay. it's an infrastructure matter. So, yeah, this uh, we can take it uh, account in the next elections. And yeah, regarding uh, the first part, uh, there is no way for Jenkins account to be deleted without asking Jenkins admin. Uh, yeah, 
it's a feature request or whatever. So we could do it in our account app. Uh, it's a matter of uh, what exactly delete to be uh, means because you we can just delete the account but keep whatever uh, ghost instance in Jira um, in a wiki. Right. Yeah, that's the problem because you cannot just delete account. You have to retain the data. Or right. somebody may want uh, the data to be deleted and then it uh, goes to a completely different uh, space. Right, right. It's, this is this is the same class of problem that even the un the Linux vendors have. When I delete the account I created, I have an option to delete all my data and that may harvest my entire disk drive and wipe me out completely. And yeah, that's, that's a whole problem I don't think we want to solve. Yeah, uh, me neither. Even though with GDPR, etc., we may have eventually uh, uh, returned to this topic. So someone may demand it, right? It may, they may say legally you must, but for now it's not a problem for us to solve. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, well, and basically that's all. Thank so you, Oleg. If, Thanks for going through that. Yeah, so we have a bunch of next steps, but one main step is to add your feedback here. Uh, because, for example, I abstained from putting feedback uh, for now because it, yeah, I was directly involved in uh, the process and I wanted to see feedback from others first. Mm -hmm. So, if you still want to provide some feedback and it's not in the list, then uh, we can add that. So, and maybe we have some feedback from Alice or JK. No, I don't have any specific feedback, Oleg. I think, um, I think this is a really good start. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we can only improve from going forward from here, but I, I'm really impressed with, with the process that was that, that took place for this election. Yeah, this is just more education for me <laughs> than anything else. So thank mm -hmm. you so much for doing this. Yeah, thank you too. And we obviously will have more elections soon. So there is a long discussion about voting for the best changing slogan. Yeah, it's an important topic we need to discover and if somebody wants uh, to improve voting system, etc., you have use cases to test on. Hey, yeah, that'd be, that, and that would be a fun one. That, that is a, mm -hmm. choose, choose your favorite logo, or vote, the, vote your priority order of logos because CIVS mm -hmm. very much encourages a prioritization. Pick, yeah. sort them by your preference, that's nice. Yeah, we just need to explore the limit of candidates then. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so, speaking seriously, yeah, there is a lot of things can be improved. And yeah, please provide your feedback if you have one. Great. Okay. So, I guess that's it uh, for elections. Um, I tentatively added another topic about FOSDEM. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, yeah, we discussed it with uh, previous uh, topics. So, would you like to spend some time? That sounds good. Um, so, I took, so specifically for me, I took uh, Monday to Wednesday off this week. So, I don't really have any specific new updates. Um, the only, the new update, the only new update I have is, that um, the the venue that I was working on uh, before I left for for holiday, um, I it was a really good prospect, but then I was told that they gave that slot away to somebody else. So, so it's for contributor summit, right? It's for the contributor summit as well as for the two Jenkins trainings, the Jenkins pipeline training and the Jenkins X training. Um, so I did, so while I was out on holiday, I did ask Telly to look into um, our second option and a third possible option. So I need to review what was sent to me. Um, and then I will let you guys mm -hmm. know. Okay. Yeah. So in the worst case for the contributor summit uh, and I guess for trainings as well, we can uh, look for alternate venues. Because Jenkins and Jenkins X trainings, okay, they're basically Jenkins meetups. So we can uh, find a sponsor for them. 
um, Singapore Contributor Summit. But yeah, definitely all of that can happen after Christmas because now it's just a dead season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it might be a bit short notice, but I'm confident that we can figure out something. I hope so. It's, it's, it's on a, a high priority list for me to get this knocked out. Yeah, thank you very much for working on that. Yep. Yeah. There is also a mailing list thread about the agenda. Mm, so, oh, cool. yeah, basically this thread is about what we actually do. Uh, so, yeah, now we have uh, confirmation about our separate stands and uh, we are looking for information about who's going uh, to participate. So, Olivia has created a, a planning document for Fosdom 2020. And this is a planning thing. Yeah. And we need uh, to understand who's going to be there and uh, please uh, add yourself if you're going to for them. Mm. So. Okay, and so, and is the link to this document in the in the meeting notes, Oleg? I don't know that I've got it yet, so I, okay. I need to get myself listed. Oh, it's it's in the, it was in a, a mailing list, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you. So yeah, basically we have stands. We also have CICD room. So I guess Olivier is going to be busy on Sunday. So. Oh, like that's just one stand, right? Um, yeah. Yes, think... one stand and uh, CICD room. But the CICD room is not just about Jenkins or Jenkins X, it's for any project. Right. You have for Jenkins and Jenkins X uh, talks there though. And but yes, Stent uh, is uh, on Saturday and Sunday as it mm -hmm. used to be. And, and uh, Olivia has already selected this, the topics for the, for the dev room, right? The, yes. He had 45 or 50 submissions for what would be a, a much smaller number of slots, and so he already has made that choice. Good. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it's uh, published already, um, but uh, yeah, the agenda is there. So, see, 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 continuous migration and continuous deployment. So, I can find the link, but it's somewhere on the Fosdom website, and there is a list of uh, talks available there. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, I guess it's uh, somewhere here. Yeah, Fosdom is so big, so without application, you can't really do anything. So, yeah, here is a list of talks, but yeah, you can see that uh, there is uh, Jenkins X talk about from Carlos, I believe. Yeah, progressive delivery. And there is talk from Victor Falsic about which will be also reference of Jenkins and Jenkins X. I'm not sure there is a talk for Tickton. Um, and I guess there was something about Jenkins, yeah. A small journey to an Australian built environment based on Jenkins. Uh, so, yeah, that's what we have now. But I guess we do have Spinnaker in the list. Uh, but, yeah, maybe next year. Okay. Yeah, we'll just put it to the link. Uh, okay. And yeah, it's ultimately possible that we will have uh, more talks about Jenkins and other things because yeah, in previous years, even before CICD track, we had something like four to five talks about Jenkins. Uh, so yeah, even if you just look like that, so you can see that right now, one, two, three, yeah, also stands, etc. But yeah, you can see that. Uh, uh, yeah, basically it's just in our room, uh, but yeah, there might be other rooms soon mm -hmm. because not everybody published the agenda so far. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what else do we have for Fosdom? Mm. That's all I have mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. Um, Jackie, so I'm going to be reaching out to you. Um, if you can send me the um, the vendor for the for the, where you order the socks oh yeah yeah i can do that that'd be great mm -hmm. uh, yeah and that was to follow up with was also um how much swag 
Commission order, um, the CD Foundation sponsor um, some for them that drink it. Okay. While we're there, so. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, you and I, we can chat about that. Yeah, let me know. Yeah. Uh, do we have any evening programs for so um, the only one that I think we usually do, Oleg, is the um, LaCroix mm -hmm. dinner on yeah. Friday evening. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's the name of the restaurant. Roy mm. Spahn, awesome. Uh, okay, I will find it out and put it there. Okay. okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, on Saturday, uh, there will be Google uh, Summer of Code uh, gathering on the evening. So I will be busy on Saturday and probably other contributors because we had a lot of contributors from Europe this uh, year. Uh, but yeah, maybe if somebody gets together, we can use this time. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, I guess that's it for now. So, not that many topics. Okay, so next that's meeting, yeah, next meeting is uh, December 2nd, right? Or January 2nd? Right. January 2nd. Uh, do we feel optimistic enough about having this meeting or do we just cancel it? I guess so, we might need it for Fosdom planning uh, because yeah, we need yeah I intend to be here for the January 2nd meeting and we'll be running the platform SIG meeting that morning. So I think I'm, I'm at least hopeful that both those will be useful. Yeah, I have no idea what's holiday calendar in this event. I'll be working. <laughs> I might take that day off. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's see, but yeah, since Mark is there, uh, I'll probably join as well. Uh, so yeah, let's just keep it uh, January 2nd. Okay. So again, it will be like a Christmas mode. So just few people on the call, but whatever. Okay. Any other topics to cover? Okay. And uh, thanks everybody. And yep, we we'll see you in a few weeks. Thank you. Thank Two you, weeks. Oleg. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.